are just kind of false protocol to make them think twice. Rooney with three. A second one now to turn a feet. So, Potter, uh, we were talking to Joggy Mo before. He was saying, like, you know what? I'll just lean back and hold W, and that's going to make the difference for victory. But I'm pretty sure there's more to that. So what was the biggest thing that you guys had to work on from last week to prepare for this week? Just uh, not getting too antsy, giving ourselves a chance to breathe a little bit. You know, last week we had a lot of advantages, and I was starting to get PTSD in this first map as well because we had a lot of advantages once again. But um, as a young team, it, it just it takes a little bit of time to build up into confidence to know how many advantages we actually have and to just breathe a little bit. So I'm, these guys had fun on map one, so that's that's good news for us. At least for now, they were able to close it out when you had that numbers advantage. So good job for that, and good luck for the rest of the series. EG manages to close out C9's pick of Lotus, and they do so, I would say, quite aggressive fashion. Uh, again, I think that when we when we always dial in on this EG team, there were a few rounds in particular in that first half that yeah. looked a little hairy there, Doug. Yep. It felt as if EG were just letting these opportunities slip from their hands, and that's not what we want to see happen there. Right, and even Potter mentioned it. Like, it felt like it was flashbacks to last week. They had big advantages, and it felt like they were throwing them away. How many times in the last half did you see? I like, think it was like the last, last three, three rounds, rounds of right? three or four of the half. Yeah. 1v2s, 1v3s going the way of Cloud9 that really felt like what 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 was the reason behind that decision? Why would you yeah. make that play the way that you did? It really felt like they let a lot of rounds go and yeah, I think the score was what? 13-9 at the yeah, end? Yeah, here, here they are. Yeah, the map easily could have been 13-4, 13-5. I think if you know, a couple of these rounds go a different way in the first half, EG has a massive lead going into the second half and then they roll. But it was little things like this that I think kept things competitive in a way that it probably shouldn't have been, if I'm being candid. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at these moments here and right at the end of this half. Push up the rope there. Again, it's like they were getting, yeah, they were getting yeah. so aggro and it was getting them advantages. And then, yeah, I mean, it's just at the end of the rounds in these situations, it was just falling apart. I mean, it's you know, not Derek's fault there, but at the end, like they're losing 1v2s. There's just really no excuse for situations like this. Zeppa still getting kills while in the, the nade. Another 1v2 for a moose. Like you said, Doug, this really could have been a serious role. Yeah, I th you think there were just a lot of things that Cloud9 was able to get away with. And honestly, mad respect to Cloud9 for punishing them when they could have. Very true. And they should have, right? Like, there are a lot of teams who aren't able to capitalize on those windows, those mistakes that are being made, and good on them. But yeah, yeah. the truth is, uh, I, I think they roll back and they look at this map and go, why well, we threw that first half? Yeah, I mean, and then in the second half on defense, they were just playing lights out. I mean, this their awesome. their rotations, the way that they were, I mean, in this situation, just absolutely shutting down the A side with that fade. It was just so good, night and day. They really stepped it up there. Yeah, it seemed like on, on the first half, like EG's initial plans were well rehearsed and they were like one step ahead and then they were just fumbling the late rounds. But in the second half, they cleaned it up. The C9 struggled to get rebel control. EG was just always one step ahead. Yeah. Um, looked like C9 had no options. You know what I do wonder, though? Because it, there were a few times there, as you had noted, that the mid round, the late round, sometimes fell apart. And I do wonder, had those early executes of the aggro plays they were making not panned out for them, Wyatt? I mean, then what's the pivot? Because that's what I want to see. I want to see when EG's plan struggles and then how do they re-pivot out of that? Because I don't feel like that has necessarily been the case on that Lotus game. I mean, well, if you're speaking about the first half, they just need to find the moment in the yeah. round to slow down. That, yeah. That's really it. Like, they, the, it was just all go the entire time. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think to think about how EG navigated that. I, Potter talked about it a little PTSD, for a player in that situation, that's got to feel terrible, right? It's like, crap, it's last week all over again. Jog had a slow start again. They weren't really executing yeah. anything. So I do think, especially for a young team, there's a lot to be said about the fact that they faced it again. They looked it dead in the eye, yeah. and they were able to navigate it well. And, yeah, a lot of it was due to the fact that it changed halves, and it's a fresh start. But for them to be able to put that behind them, make the adjustments that they had to at halftime, and run away with the second half, I think is really impressive. Yeah. And, hey, if the identity of this EG team is we're just going to get aggro and punch you in the face, I'm totally down with that. That's a fun one. But let's go ahead and hear what C9's coach had to say as we get ready for map number two. So, I mean, a very tough loss on that first map on Lotus, your map pick there. Um, how basically are you going to work uh, to bounce this over in this second series? I mean, it's pretty simple. It's the same thing every week. 
just a different day. We just have to bring it back. Same old S word, different pile. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck for that for the rest of the series, man. <laughs> well, next up is going to be EG's pick of Sunset here. Uh, a kind of a favorite amongst a lot of our uh, pros in the VCT Americas. We've been seeing this map played quite a bit. You heard the coach there of C9 say, we're just going to have to, you know, shake it off, do what we got to do. That is always going to be what you would expect the coaches to say. But I do think that the way Shazam that C9 kind of struggled to be able to find a footing in that game, I could see the same thing happen, especially on Sunset. Yeah, that, that's a map you scratch off. I'm not going to lie. The C9 players are probably feeling like they got outclass. Mm. Um, uh, like just by yeah. game plan. Yep. Um, so they really got to just dial in and make sure that they're feeling confident about Sunset. Um, maybe there's a lot of preparation done. I know we've seen EG play Sunset before. Yeah. So hopefully they've got their work done. Yeah, I think there are a few things that make me lean pretty heavily towards EG as I think about Sunset. I love the way Nature called that second half. Uh, on Lotus, it felt like he was outclassing them individually from a, from a calling perspective. I also think they had a lot of protocols when it came to trap plays. I think specifically yeah. about that A crunch where they had the C's and the spit back rubble where they just, or excuse me, back half wall where they just obliterated them. And the truth is, Sunset allows a lot of that. Sunset provides a lot of opportunities for these trap plays off of contact or early info, things like that. So knowing what we know about Potter, knowing what we know about how we saw them play Lotus, and then knowing what we know about how Sunset tends to play out, I I think there's really good reason to think this will be a 2 up No, that's a really good point you made. Um, you saw EG on their defense were not afraid to sit behind that Viper wall, drop it, yeah. fight Rubble, regress, while C9 were kind of playing a guessing game. They're like rotating, mm -hmm. not really sure. They weren't sticking together, being proactive, and so it's looking good for EG. I, I also think the comp lends itself to that. If they're running this fade breach combo, I mean, breach is like the king of setting up these miserable situations where you've got utility all over the place, yeah. your stun, your flash, your, it, it's a miserable situation to be. Yeah, well, we'll see if this pans out for them. Does the breach give them the opportunity to make those trap plays a reality, or can C9 manage to force that map three? Let's go ahead and send it back to your casters. Mimi, enter the floor is yours, my friends. Thank you. I love the floor and having it in particular. I love floor too. My goat. Yeah, she, she's very good. Uh, but anyways, we're getting into map two here. This is the map that for EG, they got eliminated by Loud in kickoff here on Sunset, but they've come back, looked way better in that map number one, five nine. I think this is going to be a tough one. It's, it's, a, it's a good adjustment that we saw from Evil Geniuses. And C9, while yes, they are going to be trying to bounce back, they've also got to worry about LCQ Derek. This is the map He's that back. he was owning on back in kickoff. So you got to watch out for that guy over on the stage as we load into this I like one. the concept that LCQ Derek is a, a different guy. It is a different person entirely. I'm pretty sure. I've never seen LCQ Derek and current year Derek in the same room. Mm. The ZG's choice. They'll start out on this defensive side. A little pressure into mid. Whoa. Both teams, Zapoth. I get caught by this paranoia. This dude's out here fighting. What's up with this? And he wins it too. Oxy down, paranoia, but there's no real follow up off of him. Yeah, that U tilt to support is so good. Stun keeps Apoth, Apoth alive. He's still a bit stuck here, but he has teammates to support towards main. And yeah, Cloud9 has no way back into this one. EG escape. Interesting start to a round there from EG going for that pretty low utility investment, but creeping out into mid for that early kill. C9 looks like they want to play this one by overloading pressure into mid, spamming out Derek quickly, seizing control into market. But with Superman here, with Apoff back ready to go, they're ready to fight off of one another. The right clicks coming in fiercely, Apoff here to support as well. Zeppa jiggles around and does secure the kill, bringing things more even for C9, but 2v3 is not going to be simple. EG not giving away a fight here. Look at that player going into mid. Rooney was thinking about stepping out into that space, but EG have grouped up three players to retake market. Oh, the timing is brutal there. Zeppa would need the ace to win. He's already picked up three, but EG swing together. They're not just, they're the not just swinging, they're jumping around. Right clicking, have a little fun with it. From the start of that pistol round, creeping out for that early kill, setting up EG for a nice little advantage there. I liked how they played that one. Yeah, yeah. and I think we're already seeing some of the power of the breach there. Having those fault lines from across the map to support a player walking down. The only reason Apop lives there is because of that well-timed fault line and then his player's top mid swing to help him get out. Yeah, because he was getting, you know, utility dumped on him as well. There's paranoia, paranoia that flash. hit him. 
Yeah. But he gets out. Okay, Oxy's doing it again. C9 Let's have come in out. this week, and they've just got a read. And the read is, we're, we're buying in round two. We're going to support Oxy. If Oxy was on my team, I might do the same. Yeah. Do the spike down. It's really only one player who will have less than a full rifle in round three. And even then, you know, another teammate can buy for him. He can probably get another Guardian in the next round for a teammate there, too. It's not too bad. Actually, it was Zeppa that dropped him here. I'm, I'm running the numbers. Don't worry, I'm not trolling. Zeppa's down to 400, so he's the one in trouble. Ouch. Nice shot by Oxy. Opens it up onto one. That was a good no eye on to draw, but his movement was fast enough to get out of dodge. Last game, he got one with the Guardian, too, but it wasn't enough to secure the round when... Now EG have grouped up. Right Jogmo and Nature linking up in elbow. Actually stepping out of that smoke too. They're looking to fight up into it. Vanity picked up a gun. 1v1 against Jog. Again, this timing is everything. And Vanity ahead of it this time. Doubles up. Apoc back sight getting overwhelmed by the Guardian Cloud9. Looking to close this eco. A single Guardian to grab another Spectre and go for the fight. Now Superman out of the smoke does absolutely nothing. Vanity just found that thing lying on the ground and forgot three kills with it. Dennis was talking about some of those sloppy rounds from EG in the first half. Those man advantages slipping away. I mean, that's one they're going to want back. Yeah, that just should not be happening either. Like, this comp, the, the raise fade, a lot of teams have shifted away from playing it, but it dominates A main space. Obviously, they were looking for that re-aggress, but it just didn't go their way. Throw me a gun mid-sight. Oh. <laughs> What, what, what? Yo, call a timeout, Vanity needs to breathe! Most serious Cloud9 call. <laughs> Alright. Old play in the book here, but a paranoia line ready to go. Right across there when they scale up. If any contact is made, they can heat up off of this with a couple of satchels to chase down a blinded player. Derek on the jiggle. That's LCQ, Derek, I'll have you know. I'll say spot this time. <laughs> yes. Legally changed it. There's a bandit over on this A site too. There. It's too bad. EG had a couple of trap setups going over in market and B main, but C9 guessed right the weak side and they're already in. Haunt missing out a little bit. Derek won't connect for anything on that one. Now here comes this nice little util combo. Zap up. Gets far enough away on that tether to stay alive, and now gets to recommit the point. Vanity, how aggressive does he want to look? Go for those wide, fast swings with the Spectre. That's his comfort zone. I've got your Oxy trial. looks to stall out, but EG are wasting no time satcheling in with the Classic to get a kill. But now as they run through the smoke, they're all blinded up. Oxy's One just taking remaining. off heads. No chance for EG. Those shots were pretty clean. Okay, Oxy. <laughs> Get a little fired up. I see the smile from here. That's that guardian. Still holding on to it. Okay. So round four. Ichi finally gonna have weapons back Let's online here. Big the question for me is around this A main control. Because despite this comp strength in that area, I think Cloud9 have done a really good job of feeding out that util and then re-flooding in and punishing that space. Yeah, you don't when you're attacking into this thing, you do not want to swing in too early on. Although EG are going to take this fight fast. It's a flash instead of a fault line to post up here quickly. Holding on to that fault line now, as a matter of fact, as they creep up behind. Well, it's not even a one way. They just want to take that fight. Holy. It's a one for one, and Derek falls back. The question is if that's really enough to justify the investment. A lot of tools put into that. Jaw would have had the showstopper. Now that's offline. I'll say, though, I'd trade my raise on defense for the raise on attack. Sure. Remove having, that dive having no ability. dive against that cypher comp is pretty difficult. Yeah. Especially since without a Sova, your only real tool to break trips, besides slowly contacting in, is that raise nade. C9 do not have good ways to heat up with this comp. You know, the sky flashes they're already out of, as the a matter of fact. The way is Oxy. That is very true. Or using some tools to, to find a bit of a lurk. Big problem for them right now, though, is they weren't able to spam out and break that Cypher trip in mid. Big reason why you throw this attacking Viper wall that cuts off market Where and top mid is to threaten that lurk, but they're grouping up into this A main space, which will not be easy to re-clear through. This is their last piece of initiator utility with that dog. Derek 
one for one. Nature swings forward after shock. Sapphire gets out of it. Left. So all three players from C9, they're not going to re-rotate all the way to A. That's the or thing, B, without the satchels, you just cannot heat up off of that. So they're banking on the fact that now EG have over-rotated into A, but they're making tons of steps. Superman's got to hear that. Swinging out top mid, that paranoia is going to hit absolutely everyone, and the clock is winding down. Ten seconds H3. with Apoth still on site. Seeing the planter, he can look for his timing, but now fully aware of Superman Three, trades out from Boba, the last plant. player to plant the spike, but you are not long for this world, buddy. EG dominate. C9 without time to plant. And that's the reason you pick this comp. If you can dominate A main control, completely shut down that space, and funnel your opponent into that Cypher site, it makes playing defense on this map so much easier. C9 are gonna have to do a better job, I think, early in rounds of hunting down some of that util. This round, they turned around to try and deal with that early aggression. Honestly, a really nice variation on the sure. normal A main control pattern. One you're enemy remaining. But I do want to see them make more use of the Viper while they're throwing. That'll be very important for them. Although I'm thinking Jogmo is looking for an early dive play. We need to get back into this one because already top mid Jogmo with a showstopper. Different setup from Evil Geniuses. Ready to maybe snap that one off of a tripwire being broken. Keep your eyes on nature. From the same site, he can stun all the way over for Jaw. And this time, the trip was broken. Ten seconds into the round. This is exactly how C9 have to play it out. Now, as the wall comes up, there's so much more threat to get this lurk going. Nature. Containing this space. Uh -oh. Showstopper from Jaw. Over the top. Lovely stuff. Oxy made it through, though. He is so fast. Derek wasn't ready. Nature is stuck slant. Does Oxy know? Yes, he does. He sent the rocket here. Absolutely. Site secured now for C9, but Jaws going fast. Can he get through this smoke? He's already ahead of the nade. Superman on the flank as well. Paranoia comes out, taking his time. Jaws also getting the kill on site. EG are heating up into this retake, but Seppa slows that down. Apoch is down. Jogamo scaling forward. Hunted down by the Seekers. But there's three players isolated off site. It's all on Jogamo now. Three kills in the round already, but two mollies still yet to come. Found one HP from the Decay. He tries to bait out a shot, but the trade comes through from Rooney, and C9 get their round. Great variation there from Cloud9, working early up into mid. And again, we saw this some in map number one. Oxy, the way he passed with his satchels, is consistently breaking timing. He was so fast during this one yeah. to win the round. And he knows the Bleach is here, because that's where Bleach threw the stun line yes. from, into A main. So that's why there was no question about it once he got that first kill. Pops that showstopper. Very good awareness for him, good comms from his teammate as well, to pinpoint the location of the EG player. So 3-2 to two now. Cloud9 pull ahead and reset EG onto an eco. For the first time this half, they'll turn their attention a bit towards B man. Yeah, and it's coming with throwing that A wall as well, so bit of a ruse done at round start. A pop chipped out big time. The ultimate is ready. C9 gonna hit the brakes a little bit here. Threatened that they could have walked back into some mid space. That's what yeah. EG are ready to re clear from, but as the smoke is go down, here should be the hit. Going out onto site. Oxy gonna scale this one a little bit slower. The only real risk is if Super can find something over top there, but unfortunately he's not tense. And he only has a class. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think it's less to do with the fact he's, he's not tense and more to do with uh, the gun. Okay, is that what NT stands for these days? I always thought it was a nice try. <laughs> Language evolves. <laughs> that it does. So does the, the, the B post plants as well. Bandy playing on top of that box there. C9 getting a little crazy with this one, but making very nice work of Evil Geniuses on the low buy. Yeah, clean Antico there. Flawless round. And I want to see if C9 continue to throw this Viper Wall over towards A. Last round they didn't use it, but it's pretty good at breaking those crossfire lines because C9 have been approaching A main from both left and right side. The wall completely divides that. Get your Ecos, pop off. I mean, how many Eco Frags? Oh, he's getting consistently. He's going to be about halfway back to that rocket. Is that me? Yeah. Fast like into A main here. 
for Cloud9. They're going to get ahead of that breach. Stun seized off, though. But they have the space. EG are up into tiles, too, though. This is going to be a very fast flank if Jaw decides to activate on it. He doesn't see anyone. Still a trip in front of him. But he can very easily heat up off some satchels once his teammates are prep uh, pressured on the site. Here we go. Satchel into sight. C9. Do they want to keep fighting? Oh, Huxley does. Brain off. Go fight. Huxley fighting one side. Jaw Spike on planted. the other. These are the rounds winning duels. Jaw's going to be the first one forward. Satchel onto the box. A hot, great combination. EG will pinch together. Nade into slant. Zeppa in trouble. Has to swing so wide, but he gets it done. Nice shot onto Jaw. Has to do more, though. Flash. He avoids it. Dink onto another. Vanity joining in that endeavor. Now the next layer. Apoc re-wrapping through elbow. Down. That's a massive kill for Moose. Remaining. Now this refight into sight. So one-dimensional nature has no way to fight forward. He'll retreat. Nature Three. finishes off one, but C9 take the round, and it's all off of great reactions in the post plant. Realizing it's soft, identifying the lurk coming in, so Oxy takes that space, space back towards Alley. And comes back to assist the team in the fight. They really funneled EG into that one choke out through lane. And while, yeah, the first kill comes in and the initial wave of util looks good, it's the fact that then EG have players swinging in from the right, from the left. Enemy remaining. Staying very confident in those fights. Timeout for Potter. You guys know it by now. EG tends to win rounds out of these timeouts. Very Map true. one, it was two off her timeout in round nine. In kickoff, it started their crazy comeback to really stay alive and make playoffs there. What's her call? I mean, look, she was saying between games that a lot of what she did in game one was telling the team just not to get too ahead of themselves, sure. right? When they were rushing a lot of their post plants. So here it could be something similar where if she says, hey, actually, we don't need a big flank going on. Perhaps let's they just focus on the... They have those flanks like every round. Yeah, so maybe a little bit of a change when it comes to those post plants. Could also set up for some more B main aggression. Could be another idea. They've been so heavy into A, which does make some sense. But now that C9 have started to challenge a little bit more into mid, a little bit more towards B, could make adjustments that way as well. What we saw from her in that first game too was also just a, a read for the rest of the half. It was a couple of very different looks the next three, four rounds after that initial timeout. And it kept C9 constantly guessing. There's bigger adjustments likely to come a little bit later. This round, just one hero rifle yes. for Apoth. Everyone else on the eco. So as you see, the setup is more the same. Control towards A main early, the Cypher set up on B, the Omen being your rotator back through mid. And after C9 have taken some faster rounds, really exploding into that early space after they lost basically on time a few back. Now they've been really testing into mid, looking Wait to break down that Utel. Jajimo sending it. Haunt, even an ult committed. They're going for this one. Uh, it was it. a Utel combo. Yeah. So Jaw, he did satchel up to try and fight off of that, but really they're looking for the chip Caution damage, here. the decay of the Nightfall into the paint shell. Yeah, that little bit extra damage combined with yeah. the other piece of utility can give you that insta-kill. And the stun to hope the players can't run out. Unfortunately, it's slightly delayed on that one. Cool idea, though. Yep. But at the same time, like yeah. I was saying, the, the tripwire top mid yeah. was broken. So now the rotates come in. We got a breach that went all the way back from A to hold there. Raise there, too, to make sure no one can creep up. And EG, mission number one for them is make sure they're not walking into a stack. Not on this anti eco. Scout destroyed. There could be ideas in a second as well with this raise hiding out in mid. If Oxy wanted to just go crazy and get some satcheling going into market to fake some pressure over there, they could then buy some time for those A players to walk it back in. Could we'll even just pressure back up it. towards mid. Sure. They know Nature's been kind of playing in that connector most rounds. Here it comes. Paint shells through. No left. satchels just yet. Good counter paranoia from Supa. <laughs> Too far forward. Oxy takes him down. Player advantage picked up for Cloud Don. They're going to excel into this B site now. Apoth had wow. a rifle, and he's lining up with double. Derek finds a connection on his own flank. Apoth can't get more. Ten seconds. Plant needs to come down. Oxy protecting Rooney with his life. A fight towards spawn. 56 HP. The Stinger flying through the air as nature helps out. Only Rooney. The return tour. Can he win the clutch? 1v1. Jaw drops down. Rooney holding the angle, finding the shot! I almost broke a slit. He's back! <laughs> Rooney looking real good out there. Playing around his orb, calm with the aim. Not rushing into those fights. 
for the 3k and the Red Bull clutch. And this round almost ran away from them. But Rooney got the trade into Boba. And those two as well. Someone better, bro! Someone better, bro! Just keep up the pace, guys. What he's saying. Yeah, yeah, keep it up. Keep running it back. Of course, now EG with a buy. Made it close the last time and actually be main as five players? We've never seen this before. Something new for C9. Where do I go? Where do I go? Whoa, that is some good adjustment out of him to figure out where that open's heading and get the kill. No paranoia on the retake, no smokes on the retake. They cannot allow this fight to go down. I don't think they can play it out from here. Look for the flood of Utah. Nature has all. He's sending it back into this side. Oxy stun. And he places on teammates. Molly is chalking X onto another. Now the showstopper for Jojima goes one for one. Spike still in the hands of Vanity, but they're gonna even struggle to escape from this one. Because there's a flank coming. Last player. And Apoc has got his other side. Derek on the shutdown too. EG. Great reply. And I think that's the callway we're getting out the timeout. Oh, yeah. Change the setup, cipher to A, heavier setup on B. But also, they found the only winning line in that round. That post plant in a 4v5 without smokes for B main, I, I just don't think it's happening. And they decide to flood out onto site with that breach ult. I really like that idea coming through from them. And it goes back to Apoth's slopes again. So impactful on the attack side. On Lotus here on defense, getting proactive at just the right time on the flank. Two rounds in a row with that A main walkout. The round before was Derek. Now it's him. C9 must be aware. And they'll send more forces towards A this round. As it's walked down mid for Jojimo. Player in that close corner. Uh -oh. He's just not working. Free kill for Vanity. There's another though. Do they anticipate the second? Doesn't even matter, Apoth. <laughs> Doesn't really look like he wants to hang out in that space. Well, C9 toy with the idea of accelerating into A, deciding against it. I know exactly where what on going. earth? They pull back over Moose to get full information on this A side. And now they know three players kind of leaning towards A. It'll be tough. They towards slant. It's gonna be a fight to spawn, actually. I like this. C9 are bringing the spike too. They can't oh, I like that. The B Zeppa gets a kill, and now they're going around the world. But they're going back into Superman. It's a brilliant feint, but Superman only has a judge. He needs players to come into him. He can't very well fight back into the site. And yet all of C9 are sprinting back through Boba, with five players alive. Superman's best bet might be to run over and grab a gun from some other location. Yeah, you see him teleport over. Just a Guardian to be recovered, left. but something a little bit better, as all three EG players will work their way through main. EG have decided they're playing attack now. <laughs> Sending three players into B main. They've got an Aftershock. Got the Blast. A Paranoia, too. They could set up a pretty solid attempt on this one. But T9 have some really good crossfires here. Yeah. They don't have much time left. EG make the tough call to save. The problem is without any threat coming into Market or Boba earlier, I think it's a little too readable for Cloud9, so they can turn their entire focus back towards main. So 7-3. Cloud9 starting to run away with this attack side on Sunset. Yeah, I mean, C9 have just been finding all the right answers in the mid-rounds. Yeah, Nature's gonna find his couple of kills, but I mean, off of that, that ultimate from Moose, right? They see two players in elbow, one player shop, one player B. Pushing through their own smoke was such a cool call. I really like that. And then it opens up this entire pathway to just flood back into B. Because of the fact they also killed a Cypher, that shuts down all the defensive utility on the opposite side of the map. Those last few kills at the end, pretty important. I mean, Superman's only gonna have a judge this round. Again. Would have had five rifles otherwise. This poor guy, give the man a gun! Although he's gonna be taking that judge into B main. It can be really effective from that position. With that forward smoke, you just kind of rat on top of that orb. Same one, one, three for C9. This time they're actually just full contact into A main. A main, that is a lot of space already. Miles ready. EG have loved fighting for elbow as well. The Boomba blasted straight out of the air. Apoth is so aggressive on the Cypher. Is traded out. As Oxy finds a chance to escape from that one. But turn your attention to B main right now. Walking straight into that judge is Moose. And he is flattened. 
Maybe the gun's super needed in the end. He'll pick up a rifle now. But that means Cloud9's gonna excel back over towards A. Once this one way falls, expect this hit to come through. Both players from EG will group towards Elbow and fight to wrap around the world here. Rooney, so astute at holding that angle. Jaw was ahead of the flash. He dies for it. They're doing the same play, maybe. The ult into Elbow means there's still two there. This time, Jarek gets a kill. But the spike has still been picked up. I'm not sure if they know where the omen is, but they want to play inside the pit regardless. And make it try and run through spawn, One but that time's running remaining. out. Oxy has to get this spike down, and his pit is gone. 1v2. He'll walk up on Superman. Crossfire, though. Nature. Can he swing in time to trade? This doesn't need to. Super gets the kill. EG, after a streak of losses, find a defensive round. It's wild, because all of these fights EG took didn't go as well as they wanted them to. This one in main, of course, but those refights into the line. It's been such a consistent thing EG have looked for, is re-aggressing down elbow. Whenever the round gets quiet, they're wanting to fight into this comp of C9s. But I think C9 have been fully aware of it. Their prep against EG solid, their fundamentals good when they're scaling. And yet it's EG that went out in the post plant. Something they've struggled a little bit with so far. My camera is destroyed. Wow, my eyes are down. Jojimo swinging into mid, but just gonna walk away off that satchel. Oxy's gonna fight for it though. At least wanted to take a peek on that line. Sees so nothing, he'll retreat. I've got your trail. Okay. Seekers come out, starting over in tiles, and that's gonna give a lot of information over towards this B side. Superman dodges away as the paranoia goes out. But Oxy can't really scale up either. This Seize has kept them locked up, it's kept them low. But it's a one for one now. EG, two players in the backside. Garrett can't connect the shots. Jogamo tries to try as well, but it's all in vain. Oxy just kills them all. He won't get to use that rocket for anything good. But they've set themselves up to win this round. It's a 2v4 retake for EG. And they're so slow. You've got to go for it. Wall broken, and there's a dude there. He has the ult now. That's going to be good info. Maybe it's possible for EG. Stun onto Oxy. Yeah, but Rudy's playing lineups from his own spawn. Yeah, they're getting kills, but the Mollies have already started to be sent out. They've got to go fast. And the time is working against them. Around the corner goes Vanity. In a one on two, remains nature. It's just over. Tick, tick, tick. It's running away. And he's not even going to have a chance. He waits it out. C9 get eight in the first half. Great way to close it. A lot of similarities Switching to sides. math number one in the first half with EG having some solid ideas early on, but losing some rounds to sloppy execution. The difference is when EG adapted here, Cloud9 stayed ahead of it. Oxy's having a great game. Their sight hits throughout this one in the late round have been super well executed. They are in control. Get up. Make this easy, make this easy. Valorant the musical, Beautiful Oxy stuff. the star. <laughs> well, a great half for Cloud9 to start, but let's send it over to GB and the analyst desk for the half. Thank you for that, Mimi. And yes, that was a great half for C9. 8-4 as they come out of that on Sunset. And an even better half for Oxy because your boy's out there fragging. Yeah, I mean, he's he's doing absolutely insane. That's an easy thing to look at, but if I want to very quickly zoom out from that because I think there are a lot of things that Cloud9 are doing exceptionally well mm -hmm. in the face of the comp that they're having to navigate against on the attack side that played beautifully. They played the map masterfully. It wasn't like Lotus where we thought, oh, Cloud9 kind of gave these, or yeah, uh, EG kind of gave them away. No, yeah. Cloud9 yeah, yeah. won this half. They won it by avoiding all the trap plays. They won it by poking and prodding around the map and then rotating through and then Oxy happens. So you play the beginning and then you ox you just let Oxy Oxy. No, that's definitely the Oxy I know. I think when you have a young duelist player like that, you want to get him all the early kills. He's going out first. He's farming the egos. He's getting that confidence. Yeah. And it's it's necessary. He gets into like a flow state. He's doing a really good job. EG has some trap plays you've noticed, and he's doing a good job of getting one and getting out, beating those mm -hmm. timings. Um, and that's just all on his skill. We're on the other side, though. That's a beautiful uh, ACS there in that first half. But uh, I would just say, like, you know, 
kind of like when you look at Jog and what happened to him in a few times in that first half. That same problem of, you know, like over peaking, trying, like I think Nature was going to set up a flash, but Jog went ahead of it, right? Those are going to be the things that I think this EG team needs to kind of reel in a bit more. And you can't just be in a situation, Shazam, where you're just trying to make plays happen for the sake of making plays. Yeah, you can't force the issue. You have to do it when the time is right. You could tell that they've had these like trap plays and they're missing the timings. Like the stun is off, John misses Satchel once. Um, there's, there's, there's a plan behind it. They're just not hitting it. Yeah. I think Mimi said it well. They're adjusting EG or trying to climb on or a step ahead of it. I think it just cost Fitz the entire time. Well, let's see if EG can shake it off moving into this next half. Send it back over to Mimi and Ender. Thanks to the desk. Hopping back into this one now. Sinon, if they can win this pistol, they're on the road to seal this one up and send us to split. Pistols haven't been so easy for them to win so far. Lost the first one, but it always gives us a chance to see the round two Guardian come into play, so I can't complain. Remember, game one, seven, five up for Cloud9. They lose the pistol, they lose the bonus, and the game slips out of their hands. Whoa, 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 what was okay. that? Just stepping into B main, Rooney falls. Okay. That's no Viper wall, and yet Oxy has crept up into that back corner. Diligent clear, but Oxy gets his 20th kill of the game. This guy has been unleashed here on Sunset. Over 400 ACS in the first half, and well, the shots aren't quite connecting there. But a light peppering onto Apoth will send him out of the space. Revolutionary war firing lines in mid. No one hits anything. Warning shots on both sides. Zap will eventually get a connection. So that's an advantage C9 in Apoth. Oh, he Big saw the shoulder. Here. Moose on the hunt. Moose jumping at him and gets the kill. But now over to shop. Swing around the corner. Moose gets another couple. C9 win their pistol. Not every day you see the Moose, the one the hunting the man. The most dangerous game. <laughs> you didn't expect it today, but that's what we got. It's crazy that Oxy still found so much value in that round. After his teammate just gets picked off, he then gets a, a stun, a nade, a flash, all yeah. in his face. He's just fine. Just keeps fighting. What can't he do? You know, it's funny because I was looking at the buy from Oxy and for a second, all he had was a Marshall, which I know he almost got an ace with last sure. game. But it's funny that he's thinking about buying a baby gun after he wins a round, as opposed to when he goes on the eco and gets the Guardian. He's been trusting that, though, and is back to the Guardian for the second round. Only classics for EG. They won't make any similar investments. Yep. Beasting. Yep. Get your eco, Zoxy. <laughs> oh, ridiculous. White's clean. A little so bit too easy. Four. Yeah. Five nine. I mean, really taking control of this map. I think as Jogmo or EG with Jogmo have a lot of really good tools for actually full executing into a site. It's a big stylistic difference between these two teams. Whereas C9 went through a lot more so playing, working around their Viper wall and whatnot. EG can bully for space much earlier into rounds. Just have to worry about getting stalled out if they ever walk into a side of the map where the Viper and the Cypher are set up. And I think you might see that here already. Breach flash climbed in main. Jog gonna fast scale off that, even a little Ooh. teleport to follow up. Kinda cute. Yeah. Apoth, though, doesn't know a player stepped all the way up here in mid. Oxy. Oh, he doesn't go for the full clear. How have they gotten around each other? And there's another guy right next to him. What is going on? Rooney is there and gets the kill. But and now Oxy's so deep. Yes, and, and the trips have been shut off. We're already up on the flank from Oxy. He's so fast. No one's looking. EG decimated by Oxy. Two more players. He's so going. Paranoia. A nade. He wants another. Oxy has been remaining. shutting them down single-handedly, and he will keep A. that trend. A swing. He's dead, but the trades are there. Cloud nine. What a bonus to win. It's the Oxy show. I don't know what else to say. He just full walks up mid on the timing. His teammate getting the kill completely unlocks the Toss flank. The screen down. I mean, what a weird way to start this yeah. round. Just obscene. Pinching hey. in with his teammates to finish off that round. Hey. That's my Crimson Beast yes, right there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, <laughs> yes, just in. I'm just in like that. I'm just in. Wait. <laughs> what is he even saying? I have no idea. I don't know. But a dude's gotten 25 kills in 15 rounds. Yeah, pretty good, I think. He's only died 10 times. Wow.
And that was that was the bonus. Yeah. We've had some some cope about the Potter timeouts this game. This one feels too far gone. Eleven to four already. I mean, truthfully, you can say as much as you want in a timeout, but when there's only two rounds that C9 win to win, need to win, with Oxy playing like this, he's going to have two rounds left in him yes. to just single-handedly dominate. And if it's not that, it's just wait, charge of all our alts. We have, like, Seekers, Showstopper yeah. for a retake, run you over. Because right now, EG are... are... They're, they have to force. There's no other option I think going into this round. Every round for the rest yep. of the game. Now, the critical moment, I think, is going to be decided between these two races because they're both one-off showstopper. Giacomo has the best gun on his team, Guardian. That's a one-tap. Depending on how that fight goes, especially with both of them, Jaw and Oxy set up for this early fight in B main. Last time C9 crept in here, C9 destroyed. Oxy destroyed. But this would give EG a massive advantage if Oxy could find the kill. Can draw get it done. Oh, he's ready. Low on HP already. Oxy just rips him out of the server. It's effortless. Oh, that's it. But you're not winning this round, EG. Sorry. Try your best. I mean, rocket. look at Apos sprinting out in here. He got a kill, but Oxy's got another. Oxy's got three Oxy's kills down. here. I, I don't even know how he's finding this many Ew. fights. Look, look, the guy started B main, runs all the way back to market, gets a kill there, doubles back, helps his teammate towards spawn, and then is back in main to take that last fight of the round. 28 in 10 in a stomp. But this this round was everything. And there was spam kill from his teammate that helped Oxy out a little bit. He sees the shoulder because he's the one jiggling for the wider angle. Oxy just approaching these fights in such a calm, in such a smart manner. Chrissy, he almost has two kills a round on average. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, it happens. <laughs> 28 kills in 16 rounds. I, I can't get over it. And he's going for this walk up again. Again, Mimi, he gets it. Now the showstopper out. That's 30. That's 30 kills for Oxy. And he's only just now shut down as Apoth brings it back. Moose in a 1v3. Mission accomplished. We killed Oxy. We he's can win down. the round now. 1v3 for Moose. It'd be quite a way to close it. Moose has been quite clutch. And it's just felt like one of those games. Jaw only has a Bucky, but he has a nade, flashes, and aftershock. It shouldn't be possible. Now you've gone and done it. He'll walk into main. Sniffing out the trail. Jaw, Bucky, down. Stun is good, and Apoff swings. Lovely go. stuff from EG. They get another. They get another, and also they eat up Oxy's showstopper. That's a, a major win for them, taking that one out of commission. Because Oxy, again, he started this round off so great. But Apoff playing on those, those little angles there in mid. Right. Playing them so nicely. Really the hero in that round. Mimi, Vanity's got an operator. Okay. Out. Just hanging out over in market right now. Holding that line. A different approach from EG. I like that from Jogamo. Instead of slow playing it, he was hoping Oxy was there. And you love to see that, right? Yeah. Confidence not lost for a second. Vanity had a good position, but the util is nice to push him away. It's gonna be a little bit tough to find a line to play with this operator now for Vanity. As EG floods into the B side, that's a great smoke to support Rooney on the side. He has a 1v1 against Jaw. If Jaw picks his timing right, he could close this round. Give the opportunity. He'll swing. Trades out onto B. Vanity. It's two for two as EG have a chance to plant. And look in mid, Apoth, late player in tiles. It's planned for him to come late into market. Moose has a Cypher ult. If he can find a body here, they'll reveal that lurk. C9 taking their time. They haven't seen Apoth, and that Everyone is funny. Hiding. Now the hat's thrown out. Apoth team going run. back into main. They can focus all their attention into main. Here Oxy. comes Oxy. Sees the players, comes around the corner. Knows Jaw is behind the bend, and Moose gets the first. Second to come, almost, as Derek comes back Another around in for three on the round. Moose in a one-on-one. -on -one. Moose to win the game. This is no problem. Goes for the sick, still taking on it. Goes for the fight, the time is running low. Apoth has waited him out. Oh, well, Moose gets the third kill. It's EG with the round. So damn close. 
Luigi stay alive again. Every single round down to the wire in an EG win. EG no stranger to the comeback. We saw it in kickoff. But again, it just takes one round, one moment. And both of these have been nail biters thus far. Taking some real heroics out of Derek there to save it for EG. <laughs> Is Potter still keeping it light? Chill out. Quickly, up into elbow from Jaw. Nightfall out taps three players, I believe. EG can really apply the pressure off that. Watch mid right now. Apoth crept up. He's so fast on this one. Moose Cage. down. Cage to get away. Apoth He's still is going. Just keep running. He has a paranoia onto Oxy. Oxy doesn't look at him. Apoth is running them over. A confident call from EG, standing. and it pays off. Apoth is quickly becoming one of my favorite Spike attacking Sentinel players in Americas. So aggressive on those lurks. And absolutely no fear. It seems like a game almost, almost where EG probably wrote it off a couple of rounds ago. But with each round win, you start feeling a little bit more. It's like, we've got a chance to do the funniest thing. I mean, that's kind of a, a powerful state to be in where you've written the game off. Okay, we can win on split. That's yeah. fine. And then Apop's like, guys, I'm going to full sprint up spawn. Give me a paranoia. Yeah. I'm going to kill too. This is where you try all the things that Potter would never let you try in scrims. <laughs> It's like, hey, she, 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 she wasted her time out. It's my time to shine. <laughs> Give me that, Noya. But it's things like that. It's risks like that that kind of build the energy back up. Let you have fun. Let you let loose a little bit. and can be the start of a comeback. Yeah. And honestly, it was a pretty well put together play. The cages to cover the cross. And... I mean, with all the utility flooding in the site, look how many, they were just blinded the entire time. One enemy remaining. That's what's so cool to watch about the breach comps on this map, that you can have that stun for the Cypher top mid and still have two flashes, Aftershock, nope. Haunt combined for the execute. There's a lot of like flexibility for cross map util. It almost kind of plays like an, an Astro does sometimes, where you can be setting up two different plays almost at the same time. Yeah, you've got that super long range ability, whether it's the, the Astro stars or like you're talking about in this game, the breach stun for sure. So, C9, they're going to be the ones to call a time out here. Quick reset for them. <laughs> Obviously, Apoth proved to be a problem in that last round, but that's not going to be something EG can replicate a ton. But I think... They run up mid every round. <laughs> I mean, they could try. That's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think, honestly, what I'd kind of like C9 to try is, is a more passive A setup. Maybe with their Cypher, their Omen over there, they can play the, the high box angle and sort of play off of sight and flood back in. A lot of times when you're playing against a Breach and you're on defense, you don't actually want to be sticking your body on the site. You want to be playing in the smokes, and then after that util goes down, you want to peek back into that line, take those fights quickly. So you dodge the utility effectively. can also try to get in front of the plays like they're set up to do right now, but that can be pretty tough when the only tools you really have are, are one-time use between the dome and the sky. Hey, main, the man of the match, Oxy. Gonna insta-break this camera, and actually with that tag, isn't allowed to fight up. Last two rounds, Oxy hasn't found a kill. Now he's back onto the aggressive line and looking for another satchel on the wide swing, supported by the dog. But EG are already running. They do not want to mess with that guy. Not too bad of an exchange oh, for EG, because they still have this Rolling Thunder to fight back in. Satchel for Jaw. Raise v Raise. He is on the hunt. But the name will keep him back. Oxy's still safe on this site. EG have to turn their attention towards Elbow. It's a minor That's miracle it. that Oxy survives That's there. That's the rocket online. That's why they slow down the round. And right now, Tripwire just broken in market. Eyes on Apoth, on the lurk. Tons of pressure applied into mid. Now the rotate comes through. Here comes a re-clear for Cloud9. Zeppa on the swing. Super finds it. Two, four, two. Oxy needs to do a lot more, though, if he wants to keep himself alive here. No teammates do support, but now this lurk for Apoth. Back into Apoth. Rooney waiting for him, but can't get the kill. b site completely open for EG. They'll call back into him. And C9, with no util but one cage, have to make this retake happen. They can close the door behind them as well. A left. Cypher camera in Boba spots out that site as well. 25 he seconds. Oxy so is going so fast. What is Five this player? Last player standing. 
Derek takes him down, but C9 are playing so loose. That is a ridiculous call. You're in a two minute here, you're trying to close out the round, and he full sprints through the closing door. Mission Impossible style. Fight down. My oh my. And that was only after getting two kills to start that round. But you're gonna need more than Oxy Heroics to close this game for C9. I would not be surprised to see C9 try to fight into mid this round. That is two rounds in a row. Apoth have blown them up. And EG are bringing firepower of their own. Oxy out of market. But the whole crew is here for EG. It's not always been enough, though. The fall line in. Oxy dodges out. Paranoia 2. He's back into the line. Jaw takes him down. Jaw has been diffing Oxy in these last few rounds. I have the spike. Reminding Oxy who he is. There, I have the spike. Now this round chills out a bit. The star's dead. It's just a bucky as yeah, left alive. They don't really have much of anything, do they? EG in a winning position. Biggest, double back towards that. Biggest win for C9 here, I think. Get that showstopper out of commission. EG might try to play without that one. They gotta hold on to everything they can, but this bucky around the corner, vanity with the bucky, baby. He always finds a way. TP's out as well. He uses the blast as a little bit of cover himself. And Rooney's what? gotten one with the Sheriff. That's the lurk dealt with. The Rooney Sheriff is always good for a kill, Mimi. They've only picked up one gun, but Vanity still has a Bucky. There's... And in this angle, it's potent flash up. He is so blind. EG floods out. One Superman, one for one. It's only Derek. Needs to win a clutch left. to keep his team alive. This was just an anti-ego. There should have been no world where this was winnable. And now Derek is forced to run around the world, blinded, sitting in a molly. It's done. Cloud9 on the win. Eco. Close it out and deny EG the comeback. The absolute fakest of comebacks. Players get a little rowdy on stage, vanity and jaw. But I think EG kind of kind of did write that one off for a second. They, they started playing really loose. And I think playing it away, that gives them some amount of confidence going back into that third map. Cloud9, though, exactly what they needed here. Trading opponents' map picks. Now we head into split. C9's uh, responses, I think, especially in the first half, were so good. I really like their moment-to-moment -moment calling in the rounds. Uh, falling out of their preset plans, adjusting to what EG was showing them. And EG showed them a lot of these re-aggros. C9 dealt with them effectively every single time. And we've talked about them a lot, but you still got to talk about Oxy. An impressive map from the young man. Even in that win over Leviathan, it, it was not a takeover game for him like this one was. Love to see it for the rookie. I do love that the final round is the one that he's not needed. He yes. dies instantly, his team's got an eco, and it doesn't matter. Then you've still got the Rooney Sheriff. You've got the Vanity Bucky. C9 can fall back into those pieces. Gives you wings. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that little thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage, so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. none. Yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon.